Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing the new release of .NET Aspire. We're gonna be discussing Preview 3, we're gonna be seeing how we can upgrade from the previous preview version to the new one, and we're gonna be seeing some of the new enhancement that has been added within this release. So let's get started. So this is the blog post that Microsoft has released on the 13th of Feb, where basically it illustrates the new .NET Aspire and some of this feature that has been released with it. So the first part of this document which shows us how we can actually update this, we're gonna be going through that after, but let us see some of the API changes that has happened. So we're gonna be seeing that said some breaking changes that has happened within this release. So like utilizing with service binding has now shifted to with endpoint. And this is something that we need to keep in mind in order for us to keep our application up and running. So the main updates or the main changes that are coming into place our dashboards updates and refactoring. So the dashboard is gonna be much more streamlined. So now we can see here that within the request mapping, we're able to see the duration of those requests and then we'll be able to actually utilize this in order for us to map out how long a request will take and then we can actually see the performance impact, etc., etc. We're gonna be seeing a new resource details view where we're actually able to see a much more detailed view about every single resource that we'll be utilizing. And if that's gonna be from a container side or from an application side, there's gonna be out of telemetry improvement when it comes to actually viewing the telemetry and the performance of our applications. Whatever the application is, it's going to be a front end, back end, etc. All of this telemetry is going to fit back into our uh, dashboard and we'll be able to see it from there. As well, there's going to be a new components added and these components are really, really exciting if you work with OpenAI and utilize the AI platform on Azure. So there's now a new component for OpenAI where you can actually add this component or new get package into your application and then you can refer to it through Aspire and this new AI capabilities will able to actually have all of those different monitoring observability and all of that will be already built in into the aspire dashboard so that's going to be a really interesting feature and how that performance will be able to impact our application so this is really exciting and if you're working with uh, distributed systems there's going to be a new enhancement for apache kafka where the new component within apache kafka where you can actually include this inside your configuration and then you'll be able to monitor your kafka nodes through there i want to explore this in more detail i want to create a video regarding Apache Kafka and .NET and then basically from there I want to create something regarding this component within Azure so expect a video coming soon on that because this is really exciting. I have really high hopes for Apache Kafka within .NET Aspire. As well if you're still working with Oracle here there's a new component for Oracle uh, within Aspire and it connects directly to Entity Framework Core so that's really interesting to see in order for, have, for us to have a much more variety of database services. On top of that we also have MySQL also being added. MySQL is a very popular uh, database service that's still being used a lot these days so i'm happy to see it being added here i don't use it but a lot of services actually or applications still use it to these days and now one of the biggest things if you're utilizing any types of non-sql databases on azure which is cosmos db new cosmos db component has been added where you can actually enable this directly into your aspire dashboard and you'll be able to see the telemetries there's going to be a video regarding cosmos and aspire also coming soon so this is going to be really really interesting on top of that there is now uh, logging into the Redis uh, component. So the Redis component has been added, I think, within the first release, but now there is more uh, capability of to do logging with it. So that's going to be really exciting. And at the end here, we can see some of the breaking changes that this new preview has included with service binding has now changed to with endpoint. As well, there is going to be some resource commanding commander extensions that we're actually able to utilize within our Aspire application in order to, uh, for us to customize it a bit more. There is a Postgres PG admin resource extension now. I don't really use PG admin a lot, but it's uh, good to see it here. And then we can see also there is the uh, model dapper sidecar with Aspire resources, as well as some runtime path that we can actually add. Uh, .NET Aspire also support .NET Orleans, uh, which is really exciting. And basically at the end, they showcase some of the new samples. So now that we have just basically went through some of these new features that has been introduced, if we go all the way up, we can see what is the guide for us to actually update and have the latest version of Aspire available on our machine. So here, if you're using Visual Studio, I'm not using Visual Studio, so I'm going to do this through the .NET CLI. So I'm going to open my terminal. So I'm going to follow the same steps. So it's going to be .NET workload update. Perfect. We can see it's updating and installing the latest versions. And we can see we have .NET Aspire hosting updated to version 3, preview 3. So this is really exciting. This will take a few minutes. Okay, perfect. So now that has been done, we can see the Aspire has been updated. The second command is going to be .NET workload install Aspire. Perfect. We can see it has already been installed, but 
but we can see here that we have version 3 available preview 3 which is really good and lastly to make sure everything is running successfully i'm just going to put dot net let's clear this up we're going to put dot net workload list and we should be able to see aspire preview 3 and this is what we have we have aspire and basically here we can see we have preview 3 which is perfect so now that we have done this now let's continue through this document and we can see here in order for us to update existing application we need to update our reference packages so let's do this right now so i already have an application which is built on dot net aspire that we have built it in previous videos and within this application what we have here before we do any of the updates so let's come to it here uh, within this application as we can see here we have a web api we have a data service we have entities we have service default and we have a single page application which is a blazer application so the service default and the app hosts are basically what aspire has provided us when we have included into our application so this is going to be the main items that we want to update so let's go first into our cs pro here so we're going to go to edit let's choose one edit and let's edit cs pro and as we can see here we're going to have the preview 2 available here so i'm going to go back to the article and take the latest version which is available and i'm just going to copy paste it here perfect now i'm going to go to service default as well see if that means updating so edit service default and there is nothing here there is this one but we're going to be updating it as well so let's leave this right now without doing a manual update so once we have done that now i'm gonna go here and go to all of the nuget packages let's just wait for them to load and i'm gonna include the pre-release so we can also have pre-release for aspire so we're not gonna be updating to preview 9 yet which is fine and we can see here we are on the latest version so that's really good entity framework core we're not gonna be updating it open ai that's what we want to update so we're gonna update to version 8.0.2 also 8.0.2 for entity framework core let's update this perfect let's update this so now this is going to be the first one directly related to aspire so let's also update this open telemetry is already updated or oh, let's take it to the 7.7 update so this one we're not going to be using this one let's update to this one it's already on this so perfect great now let's update this we need to update to service 3 that's going to be the aspire package that we want and let's absorb this is also updated to the latest version let's update it and now we can see here that almost everything has been updated to the latest version so this is exactly what we want so once we have updated everything let's just do a quick build so i'm just gonna open up this i'm gonna put dot net build and this will build everything and we should be build succeeded now if i go back and put so let's go into the api and dot, dot net build here as well we can see everything is building now let's run our application okay let's give it a few seconds still like booting up okay so now if we come here and refresh we are able to actually see that our application is running we have the two projects we have the front end and the back end running so if i click on the front end we are able to see my front end application we can see that we have it connected to our api we can see the driver is being pulled in from the api i'm gonna add a driver i'm gonna call it aspire 3 and here i'm gonna put three driver number three and date of birth same i'm gonna put and i'm gonna click on save and now we can see we have aspire 3 being added so this means that our api is actually running i can edit this i can remove three from here and then i can put save a driver we can see it here i can go to the test one and i can even delete this driver and we can see it's all working okay perfect so now let's see some of the resources that has been changed so now if i click on logs we're able to see all of my api logs similar to what we had had before but because this is my front end log so we can see everything is going perfectly you can see it's much more a streamlined approach to the logs let me go back if i click here on the api we can see all of the detailed logs of my application is actually happening here we can see all of the get request all of the updates that we are we're doing and the create so uh, we can see it everything is, is uh, running as it should be now what i can also do here is i can go to the let's see this is the logs as we have seen before so this is a structured log so we can see here all of the requests which is coming in so if i click on view details we're able to see all of this information available here I can even click on trace and within this traceability i'm actually able to see all of the requests that i have done so we can see this is the get request this is the put and this is the delete that i have done and if i click here on view for any of them so here within traces we can see here which is the, the how much every single request have taken and you can see here this is the get request this is the post so if i click here we can see the post information the time we can see the logs for those requests if there was any has been created we can see even like filter these logs based on back end and front end i have no metrics right now so if i choose back end we can see some of the metrics for my back end which has been also updated if i click on the front end stuff we can see also the front end stuff how they were running and don't forget this is a blazer application that we are actually able to see this if i go back here to traces and i click again on view we're able to see all of the flows of the request and if i click here on view logs we'll be able to see those logs also happening so we can see that preview 3 have added a lot of stab stability a lot of nice features to it it has a lot uh, enhanced the dashboards as well it uh, made 
our application a bit more robust. So this has been a very quick overview about what's new in .NET Aspire and how you can upgrade to the latest version of .NET Aspire version 3. If you're really interested in this topic, please let me know. I'll make sure to create a new video about the different components, specifically the Kafka one and the OpenAI components. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee with us. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.